is is, is the new energy coming on the planet going to help that? Yes, uh, I think it will indeed. I mean, the issue is now we manifest these, we'll call them advanced energies, if you like, from a deep meditative state. And we imprint them into a simple electrical device. So the device acts like a kind of consciousness device that, that brings a, an act of creation into reality. And I think these energies um, have been growing in nature for some time as well. And I'll come to that in just a minute. But I think that they are continue to grow. And so over the course of this coming, our present century and the next century, they will grow abundantly. And as they grow, the connectivity between people and things and people and people and things and things will increase. Now, the place where I first tumbled on this kind of thing um, was some work by a man by the name of Enseric, a short article published in Science Magazine maybe 10 years ago. Mm. And he was looking at the placebo effect and he noted that basically 25 years earlier, the placebo effect for the system he was studying was maybe 5% or 10%. So you could think of it as nothing. Mm -hmm. But at the time that he was writing, the placebo effect had grown to 70 to 80%. And, and people... Pharmace pharmaceutical industry like to sweep that under the rug. Uh, people didn't want to pay attention to it, but I of he course. found it interesting. And I found it terribly interesting, and you yeah. had to ask yourself the question, what is going on in nature yeah. to have brought about this kind of a thing to happen, and what does it mean? And, and so I think that aspect is increasing greatly. And, and the issue, for example, in the last decade, we've been talking in science, orthodox science, about dark matter and dark energy and acceleration at the outer edge of the universe instead of deceleration. Mm. Well, this all, I have the explanation I have for this, this is this magnetic information wave stuff that I've been talking about. It's the, it's the second aspect of physical reality. It's mm. the one that goes faster than light. And it is, if you go back to the work of Dirac, Basically, that's in what's called a negative energy domain. And physicists hate the concept of, conventional physicists hate the concept of negative energy. But they deal with it all the time. They just don't realize it. Um, if you, if one, sorry, there's just a little bit scientific, but you may have an audience that is interested in this. Mm -hmm. when, one, when one makes a drawing of the potential energy function that occurs when you take a, a molecule made of two atoms and you change the separation distance. What you find is that at short, short separations, the potential function drops from very high positive values to, to lower and lower values. And then as you separate more and more, the, it builds a potential well, and then they dissociate at some separation distance. Now, orthodox science puts its origin for measuring energy at the minimum point. And therefore, all the energy levels, the quantum energy levels, are positive. However, if you shift your attention and you, you use the dissociation energy position as separation distance as your zero, then all the le quantum levels in the potential wall are negative energies relative to that origin. And so if we want to think in really expanded terms, like something we might call God, whatever that is, that it provides a huge potential well underpinning all of nature, then it's understandable relative to that potential well. All these negative energies have, make, make, they make sense because they're in, the, in a potential well. So I'm sorry that was a little scientific, and most of your audience. No, will that have is interesting. Thank you for bringing the science into all this. It's it's definitely one of the reason of this 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 interview also. Yeah. Well, well, it is. It allows one to use these concepts and understand very clearly where dark energy and dark matter come from, and they. It just if you if 
if you have a gra- you have a gravitational force when you have positive mass interacting with positive mass. And orthodox think science up till a decade ago thought that's all there was. But their experiments show that there is an, an attractor, something they can't see with their instruments, but they see the effect of it on the movement of planets. Well, you, if you take negative mass times negative mass, that's also a positive gravitational force. And that becomes the dark matter. Okay, the, the, the dark matter gives rise to dark energy, and it is what I've called the magnetic information wave stuff. It is the stuff of the coarsest level of the physical vacuum. And, of course, every kind of substance has to have a communicator, which we call photons. It's the electromagnetic photon in our normal reality, but at every of one of these deeper levels in the vacuum, they have to have a, a photon as a communicator. So that's what gives rise to dark energy. And yeah. now when you, when you want to look at the acceleration at the outer edge of the universe, yeah. then all you have to look at is the, uh, the force of interaction between the positive mass yeah. and the negative mass with a bit of coupler to allow them to interact. And then you can see, because there's we, science, orthodox science says, we have much more dark matter, matter and dark energy than we have of our normal electromagnetic matter and ma- electromagnetic energy. It means that that's going to be clustered in the, in the inner regions of the cosmos, and you're going to have an interaction of negative mass in that region <clears throat> with the positive mass of the observable planets out on the outer edge of the evolving cosmos, and that's going to be a repulsive force, and that's why you get acceleration. So, 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 are you, so tell us on the scientific level, is that what you're explaining right now, all those low energies coming in, and, and at the same time the higher frequency? Can, can you tell us how this, is, how this is working right now as we go towards 2012? Are those lower energies going to fall away? By then, well, the, and is right now, uh, is it building up? I mean, how does all those energies are interacting well, right now? Well, the, is, the issue <laughs> that you have to have the coupler, okay? And the coupler seems to be creeping in. There's some cosmic process which is allowing what I've called deltrons to grow naturally in the universe. Our experiments, we create them abundantly from ourselves by going deeply into a meditative state, into the vacuum level of reality, and asking that a particular intention be manifest in this device. So when it's put in a room and you switch it on, it conditions the space to a higher level of reality. Hmm. And then you can influence with your consciousness. And you can bring about a a new world. Hmm. The weakness of this is that It depends upon the humans. The humans have the capability of doing this, but they have to be willing to work on themselves. We know in our society there are pumper-uppers and there are drainer-downers. They have to be willing to convert themselves to pumper-uppers because if this coupler medium drains away through negativities and wars and all kinds of stuff of that nature, then we can't sustain this higher level of reality which is what we're moving towards, is my working hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And that we can do it. We humans have the capability, but we have to have also the will to make the effort. So there are some chances that we don't. Of course, the whole issue, this is a classroom as far as I can see, and we have choice because you can't grow in consciousness without choice. And, and uh, hmm. we can choose to go up the scale, scale of consciousness or we can choose to go down the scale of consciousness. It's up to us. And how, how we, can we open up on a daily basis to that? Well, from I, my feeling is you, you first have to, you have to give this kind of thing meaning in your life. Mm-hmm. I, have to, I have to give you another piece of information. Mm-hmm. And I'll come back to this. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a book called, but written by Tor Noritrander, a Dane. It's now published in English, probably also in French. It's called The User's Illusion. 
Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he pointed to here was that the human unconscious, even at the five physical senses level, had about a million, yeah, the, the order of a million times the information handling capacity of the human conscious brain. And the human conscious brain has an information handling capacity of less than 50 bits per second. So the unconscious is at least 50 million bits per second. And what seems to happen is that the unconscious does all the work. It accesses nature. It, it uh, gathers all the data. It probably calculates various algorithms. It probably plots things. And at the unconscious level, there's a huge amount of information that's available. But what it does is it then takes this information and it crafts um, small kernels that can be of information in the, in the low, less than 50 bits per second, and feeds it to the conscious mind, so or the conscious brain, so the conscious brain can have the experience mm-hmm. of living in this world. But the important issue here is that the unconscious sends and fabricates these kernels only along pathways that the human conscious has heretofore given meaning. If you don't give a thing meaning, mm-hmm. then, the, then you're not fed this information mm-hmm. all right, from your unconscious. It's all there as a possibility for you, mm-hmm. and thus, to grow in consciousness, you need to give things meaning. Mm-hmm. My... You know, we, we, don't, we don't have an agreement on what consciousness is. It is the dictionary definition, but that's very, very thin as far as I'm concerned. To me, consciousness is a byproduct of spirit entering dense matter. Mm. And, so, and so that as we build ourselves within the build infrastructure into ourselves, then it appears that that's a prerequisite for spirit to enter, enter our bodies. Mm. Our, dense, our dense matter. And the more we build ourselves, the more spirit enters, the more conscious we become, the more we become aware of things we weren't aware of before, the more we build ourselves, the more spirit enters, etc., etc. It's a bootstrap process in which we grow, and ultimately our consciousness, our human conscious brain, will expand to the information handling capacity of the present human unconscious, etc. So this, this is all up to us, mm-hmm. it seems to me. The possibility is there. Um, we have to give it meaning. I mean, by all means, be critical. I mean, being critical is an important part of discrimination in our life and our evolutionary process. But try to be open-minded. Try mm-hmm. to, to just withhold judgment but look at the data. I mean, the data, the one thing we learned back in the days of Galileo, Copernicus, Kepler, Newton, etc., is that look at the experimental data. That's where the truth is. And don't get stuck with a paradigm and a reference frame for nature that uh, has outlived its usefulness. Now, it doesn't mean that useful things aren't being done by orthodox science. They are. But I'm not sure they are helping us at this point in our evolutionary process. Yeah, at because this point. Yeah. They're, they're squelching this higher aspect of ourself. They must necessarily just look at humans as meat. Mm. 